Okay. The power of our okay, I think we are good now. Hello, everybody. It works this time, I promise. <laughs> but let me actually just share this one. Toymaker, pleasure. I think it's the first time I'm seeing you join a chat. All right, so. Hello, Ryan. I missed this. Oh, let me actually just turn that down. put this one into the chat so you guys can see it too Awesome. Toymaker, thank you. Uh, yeah, so we have a bunch of Ruger Precision stuff coming up. Oop, that's our super secret. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so we have our Ruger Precision Rifle videos coming up. So um, I did give the 6.5 PRC to my brother who loves it, but I have the 300 PRC. We did a couple of, oops, sorry, the camera over here. Uh, we did a 300 PRC. I did a couple of upgrades to that. Uh, one of them is the... Um, uh, ABR adjustable bench rest. Um, damn it! What the heck does it stand for? Um, really cool attachment that's going to improve. Um, it replaces a portion of the Ruger Precision Rifle stock, fixes a couple of issues. Um, so I'm going to be taking out this weekend, I think, um, to test it out. Um, also got some really cool stuff from Catalyst Arms, including the extended bolt knob and the extended magazine release. So that's going to be really, really cool stuff. All right, let me just share this one. Um, and then I'll give you guys the background on the auction. Um, all right. There we go. Um, also got some really and cool stuff from Catalyst Arms, including the extended bolt knob and the extended magazine release. So that's going to be really, really cool stuff. Just yeah, so unfortunately, it looks like it was, uh, have to do a new link. And then I'll give you guys the background on the auction. What's going on, Joe? Thanks um, for joining. Yeah, guys, sorry about that. So I had the first link, and then it started the streaming software, and it was having an issue with YouTube um, in terms of, I don't know, there are some issues. 
And if you hear background noise, that's my other, my one and a half year old, my four year old giving us crap. All right, so uh, gun auction. So we have a gun auction coming up. What's going on, Joe? Thanks for joining. And yeah, guys, um, sorry about so that. So Alder for auction. I put a link in the um, chat so you can follow along here. on there. Uh, if there's any guns you're interested in, yeah, actually just feel free to register. You can register yeah, right on there. And background noise. That's my bid. Or if you want me to buy something, um, send a right, super so, chat and uh, gun auction. We'll so go bid live on them. Um, so yeah, what's yeah, interesting is is, Alder for auction. I put so Alder for auction, the, usually uh, they have an auction so every two months. On there. And I'm going to phrase it, they have a gun auction in, every two months. To register, you can and most of the time what they're going to have is and, the auctions uh, are held live bid, in person, uh, plus you can bid online. Or, if you want me to buy this month, uh, most of the guns are actually from one large collection. And for whatever reason, the owner so of the collection, he said, no, he doesn't want to have it live. He just wants to have online only, which was interesting. Um, so there's today, there's a lot of military type guns, um, a lot of CNR type guns, and then tomorrow is going to be the more modern stuff. Um, <laughs> Uh, Two thousand dollars. Toy maker will chat on that. Um, so uh, I went to the auction preview day, which was today, um, from one to seven p.m., and I looked at a bunch of these guns, and there's some that I'm definitely interested in. Okay, so it looks like we are back. Yes. All right. Cool. It might be actually the software that I'm using. Okay, uh, give me a thumbs up or something that you guys see that I'm here. Okay, but it looks like on my end that it is live again. I'm going to presume on that. Oh. Cool. Yes, we're good. Perfect. All right. Um, so this auction, what we're, we're going to have a bunch of M1 carbines, a um, couple of Garands, which looks interesting. No, I think it's actually on my side. Um, it's It was definitely here, and I don't know. I'll have to inspect it, and like, it's really a brand new computer, so it's really weird. Uh, next time I'll probably just hardwire it straight into the router if worst comes to worst. Uh, but it was on a 2.4 gigahertz network. Oh, I think it was actually interfering with the baby monitor. That's what we think that we had. But I did switch it to a different network, so it should work quite a bit better. If not, I quit. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is actually one of those interesting guns. It's a Polytech M14. Um, so the Chinese actually made a couple of copies. Uh, of some guns, and I believe there's also a uh, Philippines Arms Corps one that I know is fairly collectible. So that'll be interesting. A uh, couple of 03A3s, uh, ED Stones, 1973s. Um, this is actually one of those guns that was kind of interesting, the 1898 Craigs. Um, so they fire 30-40 Craig. I had one that was semi-sporterized back in the day, and it it kind of felt bad, and like I didn't need it. Um, ended up selling it, but I'm like, eh, maybe I kind of want one again. Um, so I'll kind of pay attention. I mean, they were in decent shape. This one's completely sporterized. Um, this one's not bad. Uh, Trapdoor. This was an interesting gun. It's a Gorilla slam fire shotgun so it's really for collectors um i'm gonna be keeping an eye out on these arisakas uh, there's a bunch of them 
and some of them are like okay priced um, if I can get one under 200 I might so we'll take a look at the Arisakas uh, a couple of training guns Mauser 98 bolt action so this was actually all numbers matching um, as a uh, all numbers matching gun so someone already bid a thousand dollars on it uh, there's another one that wasn't in as good condition and it was missing a couple of things um, so that one's still at 250 eh, I already have a bunch uh, Chilean Mausers um, uh, Enfields and MLEs Okay, so it's a Mosin. I I did look at this one. Casey's. Yeah, so the 1903s, a lot of them are paper hangers. So you got to take a look at the early ones. I am not 100% on those. At some point, I will probably get an uh, 03, A3. Uh, this is actually an interesting one. Oh, so Mosin's this one, cool gun, and but they bubbled it a little bit. It has a bent bolt knob, uh, so it's not numbers matching. And I think somebody did it themselves, uh, but it's only 120 bucks right now. So it's like, eh, maybe another one. Um, pretty nice stock on it so actually with this one what was interesting is when I looked at it the first sign I felt was like wait this feels like a thin stock but it wasn't so I think someone just like really they used mineral spirits to get the shellac and the crap off of it um, I like this one um, the Chinese Mosin M44 uh, was in pretty decent shape it's missing the cleaning rod uh, but pretty decent gun. Uh, Russian SKS was in eh, okay condition, but it's already like 425. These two are the ones I'm watching. Um, so we have two SVT 40s. Uh, this gun is a Finnish capture. What's awesome about it is um, it has a bayonet and it has an extra magazine. So for those not familiar with the SVT 40s, um, it was the first uh, Russian semi-auto, and it's 7.62 by 54. Uh, fairly rare guns at this point. A little sentimental to shoot, but they're fairly rare guns. Um, great guns. Um, the Germans actually loved using them. Um, this one was captured by the Finns, um, so it was in that type of a condition. And then we have this one, uh, which was an import, so this was a re-arsenal after the war. Um, right now it's at a thousand bucks. I do have an SVT 40 already, but I might go for this. So we'll take a look. Um, uh, couple of sport rise, mo uh, Mausers, do, 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 uh, training guns couple of old revolvers this one I'm also tempted on as well number 76 which is an East German Makarov this is one of the even though it's imported uh, their import marks on it it was the nicest condition East German Makarov I've seen uh, I do have an East German Mac already in 1965 this is a 63 but this one is in pristine conditions um, original holster extra mag um, might play with that one uh, Russian Tokarev already at 650, eh, a little high. Uh, bunch of bayonets. Uh, Alex, welcome, uh, guys. So actually, if you are not subscribed to Alex's channel, Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews, we did a bunch of videos uh, at Shot Show. Uh, no, we did not buy anything yet. The auction starts in about two minutes. Um, and then bayonets, bayonets, uh, M1 carbine magazines. I looked at this scope, it was in pretty rough shape, and it's not infrared night scope. 
it was just sealed <laughs> it just illuminated radical um, magazines okay here we go we're going live okay Okay, so I guess it's starting. All right, so the auction is starting. Uh, so now we can basically see we're accepting bids. Okay, so this one's at 750. So right now the high bid is 700 and it's going basically if somebody wants it it's at 750. So it's going to be interesting. Yep, so that one sold for 700. Let me see, the sound should be on here. Or at least I'm not hearing sound. Okay, so I'm not hearing a sound, but you can basically see that people are bidding. Um, so it was the first one. So this one's already at 850. Well, 800, and you have to bid 850. Um, that one, 700, was the Saginaw M1. All right, Springfield M1. All right, so let me actually open this up. All right, so I'll read the description. So Springfield Armory M1 Garand, 80% um, parkerized finish. 750, 775. No, 750. Closed. Okay, H and R. So why doesn't this actually... Let me see if it's on my phone. It's going to be a little bit different. All right, International Harvester, M1 Garand. I haven't looked at the Garands, honestly, when I was there. Saginaw. There we go. <laughs> Seven fifty for that guy. All right, so this one I did look up for a friend of mine. Uh, so it's a thousand bucks. I guess it's the Navy. This was a three weight conversion. Uh, apparently, the CMP had these. Wow, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. Fourteen. Fifteen hundred. Sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred bucks.
Now, one of the things that I believe is happening is they have two online platforms. Yeah, so that closed at $1,600. Uh, they have two different platforms, so we're matching it up. Okay. Polytech. Get trolled. Thank you. Now, I bet I tell me how you pronounce Saiga. <laughs> right, O three A three. There we go. It's actually not horrible. All right, and actually what I'm doing here is, I'm going through the phone as well because I'm not getting audio notifications on this. Let's take a look at. That actually worked. Okay. Yep, no notifications on here as well. Uh, so for the ones I'm interested in, I think I'm just gonna pre-bid and we'll do that. And this channel is not about CNR. It really isn't. Oh, those cregs are already fairly high. Fifty. Uh, so one of the things I'm working on a video right now about talking about the fees and everything else about it. Um, so all of these prices that you see here that it's going to end up at, um, you do have to add 22% uh, buyer's premium at this auction house. And then you're also going to be responsible for sales tax if uh, you're a Pennsylvania resident. Uh, and you're not an FFL or if you don't have a tax ID. Okay. Sold for four. 425 yeah really the US made I haven't kept up on these in a while in terms of pricing um, so most of uh, the bolt act so I guess we can talk about my gunk collection um, I do have a lot of newer stuff now um, just based on the channel uh, based on the stuff that we're working with um, but a lot of the guns that I collect 
are World War II type guns. Um, so I have a good collection of Russians. Um, one of the things I actually really like collecting is Israeli Mausers. Um, so these are basically Mausers that Israel bought after World War II once they got for independence. Um, so it's just from the history, the historical perspective, it's just really fascinating where you're going to have a Mauser that's going to have uh, Star David's right next to swastika still on him. It's just really cool. Um, 1903s. So I guess these are, someone chime in. Colt 6920. Good guns. Um, someone remind me how, what the serial numbers were for the paper, uh, wall hangers versus not. I don't remember on the 1903s. Although it's interesting. So like even this one's already at 500, but it's 270,490. Probably bid on this Craig. Yeah, this is actually one of the ones I looked at. It was decent. Okay. Four fifty. Okay, eight hundred thousand and above are okay. So what's interesting is like people are basically well so these were actually above that um, but we have this one 270,490 and it's at 500 bucks which is crazy okay Harmon thank you for that info Yeah, so we have this, uh, yep, 1903. Yeah, so somebody bid 500. And it looks like it's going to end up there. I'm actually really shocked that Craig's are... So this one's already 700, and I've seen some quite a bit higher so it's it's really weird it's like I've seen some go for two or three hundred dollars at auctions and I've seen some go for like seven hundred up to a thousand even um, similar conditions and everything uh, which kind of goes to the fact that a lot of these auctions you really don't know what type of buyers are going to show up and whether you're going to get a good deal or not um, I mean like I've seen um, in the AK market yeah, exactly. Five hundred bucks to hang on the wall. Wow, okay, it's three fifty. Three seventy-five, eh? A little bit more than what I wanted to go. Um, especially with guns. So I'm supposed to say when I, uh, in the AK market. So there's actually one auction they had a Polytech AK. It for a thousand dollars. Everything. Um, and the reason why you sometimes actually have that. Oh come on! Why did it? Did it really stop? Nope. It seems like it works. Okay. Nope, it, it just slowed down a little bit. Um, I'm going to continue here. Um, it is recording too. Um, so yeah, like at some of these auctions, it's like you'll have people just go completely crazy and pay more money than they want to for the guns. 
is a little interesting. Um, yeah, but once again, though, so if anybody who missed the beginning of the story, um, what was fascinating is, like I said, I mean, most of these auctions are going to be both live in person, uh, where you'll have like 50 to 150 people show up, and then they're also going to do them online for whatever reason. So, all of these guns came from one collection, and they did not want to have it in person live they thought that by going online it's going to be they're going to be able to get much higher prices which is just weird and i'm not sure about that all right so this is so it's these Arisaka, so I already have a couple. So I'm like, oh, I don't need any. Um, but all, om almost all of them still have the mums intact. So let's see how these go. So it's $110. 140 Some would be 130 If it actually ends there, it's like, wow. It's not bad. Um, somebody got a Arisaka with a full mum for 130 bucks. Uh, at most auctions, the Type 38s have been about 250 or so. So actually, this is the one that I was interested in. It has nice wood. Uh, it's a 265. So I do have a budget in mind for this auction. I think I'm going to save it. I think I'm going to go for those SVTs. I'm not going to buy any Arisakas. No, I'm not going to spend money on Arisakas. Maybe this guy. Okay, let me scroll back up. Sorry. Okay. So it's a 265, next bit 290. It's actually not bad. This one was in really good shape. Uh, complete mum intact. Uh, it looks like it was missing the cleaning rod. Like I said, it was missing the cleaning rod, uh, but it had the dust cover everything. Three seventy five. Okay, that was the proper price for that gun. Yeah, the Tavor is awesome gun. It's you're gonna really like it. It's a really awesome gun. Wow. This Type 35, it's a neat, I don't know anything about these specifically. 600 bucks. Yeah, so the Japanese, the Japanese Arisakas, I just have a couple of uh, uh, last ditch guns that I got from a good FFL friend of mine, maybe around like nine years ago. Uh, what I do know about them is they're very stupid strong. And it looks at like just very cool piece of history. Um, so the one I have particularly, Type 99, it was last ditch. It was built in early 1945. Um, no airplane sights on that. Yeah, so typically, uh, I'm going to have a, a detailed video on buying guns at an auction probably in the next couple of weeks or so. Most of it's already filmed. I just need to put it to get edited in a proper place. Um, 
And typically when I'm going into the auction, like I said, there's gonna be two types of guns I'm looking for. There's some that, there's specific guns that I want. Um, and then everything else, I'm kind of like just keeping an eye out on, just in case if it's like, hey, if it's cheap enough, I'll buy it. Or if it seems like a decent deal. Uh, very easy to kind of get caught up. Um, so like even for example, like the Arisakas, I know just enough about them. Uh, but not enough about the specific differences. Same thing with the M1 carbines and Garants. I do know I want one or two, uh, but I don't know enough detail about it just to blindly bid on it. But a lot of people do, um, and especially if you go to a lot of the live auctions, you'll just sometimes see people bidding, and it just because they want to participate in the action, and they'll bid things up. Okay, so we're almost done with those. That is a lot of... That is a lot of uh, Arisakas. And that's actually another interesting part uh, with a lot of the auctions. Yeah, that's, so I mean, Herman, you bring, you bring up a very good point. I mean, like I generally, I mean, that's why I don't like buying on Gunbroker. If I can't see it in person, that's why I don't. Um, so with the guns that I was interested in, I actually went to the auction and I looked at them in person. Now, what's cool is they do a pretty decent job of getting pictures of the guns here. But uh, Alderfer Auction in particular, what I like about them is if you get the gun, and they do a pretty good job with the descriptions, if you get the gun and it's materially different from what it was described as or it's non-functioning, they will buy it back uh, and they will make the situation right. Uh, other auction houses, I mean, you just basically get the description and it just says as is, and then it's completely up to you. And like I said, and particularly with auction houses, so I mean, this is actually one of the more expensive auction houses. So the buyer's premium here is about, uh, so it's 22 or 25%, depending on um, which platform you're buying it on. Uh, if you're buying in person, it's 20%, and then if you're paying in cash, it's a 17% buyer's premium. Other auctions that I've bought at, I mean, they'll have like a 10% buyer's premium, or they'll have even like no buyer's premium, but these are basically hole-in-the-wall places, and it's like you better know what you're buying, because if you buy something and then you're not happy with it, tough luck. At least here, I, I can definitely recommend somebody buy their first guns here uh, because at least they're going to work. And like I said, if there's something that's completely different or something that's broken, um, they will make it right. All right, two more Arisaka Type 99s. See, I remember these things, you couldn't give them away for 100 bucks. And the cup is from SHOT Show. Thank you, Car Shark, for giving me that. But it's not Black Rifle Coffee. I actually like coffee. I just like the cup. All right. The one also, the one problem with 7.7 Jap and 6.5 Jap is actually finding the ammo. Um, so you do have to load for it. All right, last Type 99. It's at 225 bucks. So one of my more recent success stories with those hole in a wall type auctions, I picked up, actually I can't show a gun on live stream. Uh, I picked up a wartime 1940 or 1942 uh, Walford PP, beautiful condition for about 400 bucks. Uh, like I said, it was, it was weird. It wasn't just a dedicated gun auction. They had guns at the same time as a different auction. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, that was a really good price for it. I just wish I had like original. It was a bring back. Okay, what's going on there? They're still bidding. Okay, I've sold. All right, type uh, type one Carcano. That's actually interesting. Japanese Carcano type one. I know nothing about it. And once again, though, I mean, like, I would absolutely recommend do your research. Look at it. Two hundred bucks. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting. So you'd see it, there's no bids on these yet, and we're asking a hundred. I'm wondering if we're going to actually drop it down, or they're just not going to sell it. Um, so what happens if you're going to a live auction, and let's say there's no bids already there? Uh, let's say they'll ask 100, then they'll go down to ask 50, ask 25. Um, I wonder if there's no bids on it, whether they'll just pass it on. Because auctions 101, you... Oh, so I should pay attention to this. So it says... No, so I guess somebody actually bid 100 bucks. They'll have two more chances to see. Okay, so they did drop the asking price. You can actually see it was 100. Now they dropped the asking price to 50. And I guess nobody wanted it at 50, so it's a no sale. <laughs> they dropped these to 25. Yay, somebody bid 25 bucks. Okay, we're coming up to the guns I'm interested in. One seventy. Two fifty. All right, so this was actually an interesting one. So it's a thousand bucks, all matching, has all the Vaughans. Pretty good stock. Um, had the sling. I think it's a little high, but some people just, when they want something, they want something. Sold it at thousand. Uh, so this one was sporterized. Two fifty. Two seventy five. Okay. Yeah, so somebody actually chopped the stock on this one. Although, if anyone's looking for Mauser hardware, I got a big package, big box of stuff for Mausers. Three fifty, not bad actually. For fairly decent gun, M ninety fives. Yeah, these guys I don't know on. Four seventy five is what it ended on. One seventy. And I don't remember looking at these guns. Okay, 
so how many? Yeah, so the first one's number 58. So we got 13 more to go before we start bidding. And once again, guys, I see there's like eight people watching right now. Thank you for joining. Um, there's another auction day two tomorrow and we'll have better internet connection. I promise I'll actually run a hard wire cable into it. Wow, that Spanish Mauser was one for 120 bucks. Crazy. Is that poor rusty boar? Right. Uh, well, that went quick. Chilean Mauser, eighteen ninety five. Ninety percent reblued. Okay, so somebody actually redid that. Uh, I don't like that. And I guess those are the same people that you don't like Mitchell's Mausers because they redo them too. Right. So. Eh, it's actually not bad. All right. So time for the Enfields. 100 bucks. Poor rusty and pitted boar. 385, 375. Yeah, so the reason why we actually had the price jump that much, um, I believe so the auction house, so this is what we're looking at is the bid wrangler platform which is the auction house own in-house platform. And then there's also proxy bid, which is the big one uh, that pretty much most of the auction houses nationwide are gonna use. Uh, so someone's actually there at the auction house and we're looking and we're matching up who has the highest bid on the other platforms. And that's why sometimes it takes a little bit extra time. Um, Herman, so typically they don't. That's going to be up to you. On some of the guns here, I did see that they did check the throat erosion. Uh, but generally at most of the auctions, so like 90, 95% of the auctions, they won't give you that number. Uh, and it's going to be up to you to go there during the checkout day and do it. Now, the one thing I would suggest is if you have any questions, let's say for example, you're looking at an auction in a different state, call them up and usually the person who's handling the firearms auctions, they'll be able to do that for you. So don't be afraid to call and ask as many questions as you want. Um, so I know Tim who handles the Elder for Auction Firearms auctions, um, he's on there basically during the preview day or even beforehand, he's there on the phone all day answering questions going around even it's basically looking at cartouche marks or just condition wise and everything. So we're not necessarily gonna be able to, I don't think they're gonna be able to give you an opinion per se, uh, but they will give you the facts as they see them. Um, specifically if you want any other pictures or anything else like that. Now the other thing is, so it looks at a lot of these guns are coming from estate situations. So people who really took care of the guns I mean, they'll have marks on there, um, or they'll have copious notes on a lot of the guns. Uh, but the M1 Garands, they did have it. Um, so it's not necessarily like the CMP. I know the CMP, I mean, it's a really awesome gift. And if you can buy a gun from CMP, everyone absolutely should, uh, because you're gonna get really awesome uh, prices. Uh, Polsky, thank you for the question. So where do you find about auctions like these? Um, so one of the uh, good resources for it is if you go on a website called proxybid.com, P-R-O-X-I-B-I-D, um, that's gonna give you, that's basically the system that most of the auction houses use. And you can actually just put in the firearms or the type of firearm you're looking for, and it'll search most of the auctions. Uh, the other place you can use is a website called Auction Zip, and that's gonna, most of the time it's not gonna let you bid online, but it will, wow, 800 bucks for jungle carving, uh, but it'll tell you that there's an auction coming up. Now keep in mind that, that sometimes the best deals that you're gonna get are gonna be local auctions where you do have to go and they're not gonna be online. 
So for instance, this is an online auction, so anybody anywhere in the world is able to log in and bid. Okay, why did they say bidding paused? Interesting. Um, and once again, I'm, um, I am going to have a video talking uh, about the last auction um, where we do go through those questions. Uh, but yeah, proxybid.com and auctionzip.com. Uh, now, there are a couple of well-known auction houses. Um, so Morphy is one of them, M-O-R-P-H-Y. Um, Morphe auctions, they do, if you do machine guns and class three, they have a lot of that stuff and they do have a pretty big auction coming up. And the other one that I believe is coming up on Thursday is the Rock Island RIA auction, Rock Island Auction House. Um, and they do a lot of gun stuff, but the premiums are there are even higher and um, uh, it's a premium auction. So what I would say is at the large, the larger the gun auction, the less likely you are to get a deal. But what it's going to allow you to do is, if there is a type of gun that you want, it's going to let you get it. Um, so I mean, one of them, let's say for example, one of my holy grail guns, especially now that I live in free America, is I want to get an SVT forty uh, machine gun. And there's very few of them. Um, so it's it's about getting a reasonable price. It's not even necessarily about getting a good price. Um, so basically, if a large auction house is going to have it, if you really want it, you're going to pay it. Uh, at the local levels, I mean, I try to basically look for really, really good deals. Um, that's partly what we're here for. Yeah, so for instance, like those uh, SVT-40s, um, I don't need another one, um, but I think it's going to be a pretty good deal. I'll definitely bid on it. <laughs> uh, I am in Pennsylvania. I used to live in Jersey and I immigrated last year. And this auction house is actually fairly local to me. Um, so they are about an hour away from me. Okay. A Kirkano for 60 bucks. Oh, hell yeah. I don't know why, but I bid seventy dollars on a Carcano. I might have won that. Nope, somebody outbid me. Okay, I don't feel. <laughs> Almost immediately, I had a little bit of buyer's remorse on that. I'm like, eh, do I need it? Although for under 100 bucks. Yeah, like the thing is, so I mean, like it was, is like 70 bucks is like dirt cheap enough that it is what it is. But honestly, I did not look at that gun and I don't know much about them. So somebody bought it, bought it for $90. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. All right, we're coming up, we're coming up. All right, so here we go, we have a Mosin. Again, I don't need this one. Um, so this one had, okay, it says going live, but 190, 200, 225. All right, there's something up with this, so let me actually just pre-bid 175.
Okay, so it looks like, I think maybe we like we took bids on a different, okay, that was just weird. It just closed. But I wouldn't pay 250 bucks for that Mosin. That's just nuts. Okay, 225, 235. I am not paying 250 bucks for that one. So in the last auction, I picked up a similar shape Russian Mosin M44. And I paid $170 or something. Um, so this one's already at $250. Now, like, it's still not bad uh, for a Chinese, but not crazy about it. All right, so this is going to be interesting. So it's at $450. Okay, so these are the guns that I want. Well, not the Russian SKS. I have one in much better condition for the same price. Actually, I paid less than that. I think I paid. Yeah, so four fifty. All right, let's see. Twelve hundred. That's actually not bad. I just thirteen twenty five. Yeah, it, this is still a good deal. So it's a Finnish SVT-40. Extra magazine and original bayonet. No import marks or anything. 1500 alright. Nope, it's already more than I want to spend. 1400 It's still worth it. So, I mean, the guns are about $1,900 guns. Uh, but let's say, for example, if you're bidding 1400 then you're going to have a 20% buyer's premium. So 14 plus 280 uh, wow, 1500 I'm actually surprised that if this goes for more than the fin capture one, I'm going to be a little surprised. Fourteen hundred, yeah. So someone still got a someone got a, a decent deal. Um, okay, since we don't have much coming up, let me look look at the, show you the pictures. Um, so this was. Oh uh, wait, they don't even give you the those other pictures anymore. Um, so this was. Nope, they don't show you the pictures, but you can see it has the bayonet, it has an extra magazine. Um, no import marks or anything, so this was actually a bring back, uh, but it was in worse shape. This SVT-40 was a re-arsenal, uh, but with one magazine and everything. Okay. Sporterized Mausers. It's close. At twelve hundred, I would have bought it. Any SVT forty collectors here? All right. So the next guns I'm interested in. So we do have some revolvers. Um, I am interested in this German Makarov. And that's a little high for me. And then all the way towards the end, there is a couple of other Makarovs. Uh, where are they? Uh, so actually, we have a Nagant revolver, but 275 is just nuts. But it's in really good shape. Uh, and then I'm interested in both of these. Wow, it's a 200. But it has a fretted barrel. Okay. Where are we? Non Paris done non firing training gun. Asking twenty five dollars and no one's bidding twenty five bucks. And sorry for the scrolling up and down, guys. Hmm. 
no one, so we passed on that. This is interesting. You will not fire modern ammo. $60. I don't remember looking at these. Next, I'm almost out of coffee. It's almost time for me to go to bed. But we have those Makarovs. I'm actually a little disappointed. Didn't buy anything. Although really, if I didn't already have and SV240, I would have bought at least one or two of the other. But I already have one. It's in really, really good shape, and I got a good deal on it. Um, but if, like I said, if there's extra mags, I'll be all over that. Mags are stupid expensive. All right, some revolvers. And if you're hearing somebody crying in the background, that looks like it's one of my daughters. I don't remember this guy. Yeah, so we are going to bid on this. Let's say I'll go up to 350 on the German Mac. service 650 well it's 600 bit 650 600 bucks Smith and Wesson victory and 38 Smith and Wesson high bid 275 bid 300 so one of the things I wanted to do is I am looking for a cheap Mosin the Gonf revolver so we can uh, thread it and put a I don't see it, um, but I got a suppressor. Where did I got? Where is it? I put it on the other side. Um, so it's interesting about the Nagant revolvers. It's a sealed cylinder. Uh, East German, yes, we're gonna go for the East German Makarov. So the East German Max are some of the finest Makarovs there are. Let's just do this now. We're gonna go to three bit three fifty. Let's 
upgrade will probably be outbid. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I'm I'm three fifty. I'm the high bidder. I got to outbid to three seventy five four hundred. Yeah. It's decent. Like I said that revolver is worth it. I'm sorry that Makarov is worth it, but so it's four twenty five. Well, I'll have to bid four fifty plus the twenty percent. So it's already like five fifty. But looks at it. I already have one, and it's in pretty good shape. So someone's gonna get to enjoy that Mac for four twenty five plus fees. So call it five hundred bucks. Right, we have two more ch chances. Sniff. Right, do you guys feel the same way? Uh, so I mean, with a lot of the CNR type guns, they really shot up in prices over the last couple of years. So it's like these are the prices, but like you feel bad knowing how much you were able to get them for before. It's gonna be interesting to see what this FN goes for, the high power. This Russian Tokarev is probably going to go for 800 plus fees. Once again, supply and demand and people want to spend money. I'm going to bid 600, bid 650, 700. So 650 is actually a fairly fair price for them. Um, especially since like a lot of the good condition commercial type guns, I mean like we're like close to a thousand bucks now, which is just nuts for high power. It is a nice gun. High powers are very nice guns. But since we just stopped making them, they just shot up. Okay, that was quick. Okay. Russian Tokarev, 650. Is it really going to sell for 650? I'm going to be shocked if it sells for 650. As if this last auction, this same type of gun went for 800 plus. Wow, somebody bought it for 650. Good for them. Uh, uh, West German uh, Walford PP in 22. Was in decent shape, but it's inter arms. 350 375 so this is actually another one of those new ones it's like it's not, it is original german but it's not wartime german so like is there still value versus just getting a new one all right so it's gonna be a bunch of bayonets okay bunch of bayonets well and then we have so I'm gonna pass on the scope uh, wasn't in that good shape and the glass was already I think there's actually like mold or something growing inside um, vintage ammo is usually really expensive for the most part 
24 boxes. So what does that come out to? Well, that's pretty much what you can buy factory for. Okay, so we have the that there, we have that the Gonk Revolver. We have and then we're waiting to like 169 and 170. Those are the last two guns that I'm kind of interested in. Um, yeah. Oh, and actually there was this Mosin. It's an M44 in really nice shape. Um, really, really, really nice shape. Okay, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting to that point too. Although I gotta tell you there, Herbert, it's like when you go to the auction and you're actually there, you just wanna bid on something. It's like can you go to a casino and not gamble? I've done a pretty good job this year at Shot Show. Okay. Um so the so really uh, further down the auction, there's a bunch of ammo. So what's interesting about ammo is, so at a regular auction, sometimes you'll have offline lots, which are only available offline. Um, so typically it's gonna be like smaller lots or things that they think are gonna go less expensive. Uh, or usually, let's say it'll be like a big box of like mixed ammo and stuff. And they don't wanna pay to have it listed online. Um, you can get some really good ammo deals on that. On a flip side, you'll have a bunch of ammo that they list online. People are gonna pay more than retail prices for that ammo, which is just nuts. And I don't understand. It's like, don't these people know that you can just go to Walmart and get that same ammo for less? It's just weird. Um, some of the best deals that I've gotten at the auctions is um, on reloading stuff. Um, so reloading brass and powder. I got one lot, I think it was only like $5 for a big box of brass. And there's like a ton of 75 by 55 Swiss brass um, and some Swedish Mauser brass. It was just in there already clean in great condition. Um, so I paid five bucks for like hundred fifty dollars worth of brass um, another good deal I had that I remember is a big lot of bullets uh, so I paid about a hundred dollars for about eight hundred dollars worth of reloading bullets um, you can you can usually get those in offline lots okay Sorry guys, I'm like falling apart here. So tomorrow there's actually gonna be a fairly rare gun at the same auction. Um, it's a uh, semi-automatic version of the M60 belt fed. Uh, so it's a Springfield Armory SA1. So there's only three companies as far as I know that did uh, semi-auto conversions. Uh, Springfield Armory was one of the best and the rarest. Um, and that's about a $15,000 gun. Uh, right now I think it was like a 5,500. Uh, but I did go in there and they did say that there's a reserve price on it for probably about 13,000. Bunch of bayonets. <laughs> so this year for Shot Show, um, 
we rented that would be interesting um honestly though hickok's collection is probably not as big as a friend of mine's uh, most definitely probably not as big um, so with vegas this year uh, usually i'll stay at a casino resort but this year so there was a group of like 12 of us that went um so um the guys that you're seeing in the um red adidas uh in the videos plus a couple of other colleagues a couple of ffl friends um and then alex which is affordable optics and rifle reviews he was actually in a live chat um do check out his channel really cool guy he's from canada so he joined uh, so three of us we rented an airbnb off of the strip so we rented a house for uh, most of the day so from Sunday through Thursday we rented a house and did not gamble those days most of the time that really cut it uh, the other thing so we rented a car and uh, all you can eat sushi is really good in Vegas there's one place that's phenomenal oh, I'm getting a little caught up on here um, but if you haven't yet do take a look at the uh, what's media day at the range like um, talk a little bit about the experience there now as far as the videos ah used to live in vegas <laughs> uh so as far as a shot show i do have actually i can show you uh, so we did one two so we did the what's shot show like geisley angst at arms diamond back fixed sticks alien and hksp5 uh, for media day, we're still going to do a video on the Walfer, um, the Springfield Armory Evac pistol, and then um, we have a whole bunch of videos. Um, so CZ, um, USIQ. This is actually going to be three videos. Um, Savage, Sierra Bullets, Ruger, Taurus, uh, Zev, uh, Salmark, which is Sightmark, Pulsar, and a couple other brands. Uh, we have a video with Sig, which is talking about the new BDX scopes and the cross rifles. Um, Sturka, uh, some really nice optics, and I do have a scope here. Uh, so just waiting for a new gun to put that on. Uh, Terminus actions, so they make fairly high-end actions. Uh, Lancer, so Lancer is the distributor of the Alien Pistol, but Lancer also has some other guns. Um, and then we have three videos that we did with Palmetto State Armory. Uh, so the new MP5, the new AK uh, GF4, and their new handgun, which is launching, I believe, next month. Uh, so we'll have those, and then we have video with Burger, uh, which is Burger, uh, Lacqua, and Vita Viore, and Norma. No, yeah, no Norma. Uh, Burger, Lacqua uh vita viore and sk so that's coming up um and like i said those will be one a day is the, basically the plan for releasing those videos all right let's get back to the auctions and we're still a bunch of bayonets and i'm sorry if you like bayonets i don't know much about them and these are all japanese bayonets i don't have enough japanese guns to put the bayonets on uh, toy maker, where in Vegas did you live and why'd you move? So the problem I have with Vegas is, uh, so the, knock on wood, this is actually the first year in like four or five that I go to Vegas and I'm not sick. Um, and it's like, so you know, like you go on a cruise ship, you basically know, hey, there's going to be a bunch of people in a small confined space. Uh, wash your hands so like the germs don't go all over. Shot Show is visited by like 70, uh, 70,000 people who are all touching those same guns. Uh, this year, I made sure to wash my hands like every 30 minutes, uh, anytime I almost touched anything. Uh, I drank lots of fluids and like knock on wood, I'm like really, really good this year. Oh, awesome. Okay. In Henderson. Um, a friend of mine, he lives down in Henderson. Uh, so the guy who was doing the shaky cam footage, Leon, uh, really cool dude. He was actually a friend of mine from New York. Um, he moved out there. Uh, so Herman, the Dagger 9, um, really cool gun. We do have a fairly detailed video on that. And I'm hoping to actually have one before the release date. 
I think it's going to be a really good selling pistol. What I like about it is, wow, these are moving pretty quick. Wait, why is it saying going live? So sold. Okay, this one's going live. I guess it's being bid in a different place. Um, I think that gun is phenomenal value for the money, especially the suppressor ready version. So for like $50 more, you're getting suppressor sights, a fretted barrel and something else. Um, terrific value. Um, ergonomics uh, are really good on that gun. Uh, it felt very nice in the hand. If you're familiar with the SIG, so like the old SIG uh, P2022 or the 2340, uh, the ones that they labeled SIG Pro, uh, the first polymer ones, very similar to that. Okay, why is it like, it says going live, but it's not appearing. Yeah, the optic, oh, optics ready. Yep, that's the other feature on them. So like for $50 more, fretted barrel, suppressor sights, and optics ready is just awesome. Um, so like I said, it does take any Gen 3 slide. Um, and during the interview, so it was actually really interesting, they did not want to refer to Glock at all. Uh, they were like, don't even say that word during the interview. Um, so out of all the companies, I think like they're like the most... They had the most uh, uh, rules for it. Um, so same thing like for the HK MP5 video where like don't mention HK. I'm like, okay. Uh, but obviously when we do our reviews, I mean like you're, we're gonna be talking about it. Okay, now it works. Uh, but no, so 299 is a good deal for that gun. And then um, 350 for an optics ready one is gonna be just phenomenal. That's going to be really, really good price. Uh, so for those just joining in, we're talking about my planned calendar for SHOT Show. Oh, I'm sorry, for the SHOT Show videos there to be released. And we're talking about the PSA dagger that takes Glock cuisines. It's, well, the first thing is interesting. I didn't even know that they were releasing that gun. Um, so I go to the booth and I pick it up. I'm like, wait, is this like a Gen 3 slide? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're not talking about that uh, but what's actually cool is if you already have an older gen 3 slide you can just drop it on there um, and they are thinking of selling the frame separately and I think they're targeting like under a hundred bucks um, so if you have let's say for instance if you have a uh, uh, like a Zev slide or already another high-end Gucci Glock slide you'll just be able to throw it on uh, that lower and that's it. Let's see what I do have. Hey, look what I have. I have my Zev OZ9 with a fretted barrel um, with an RMR on it. I'll put it away. Uh, YouTube has new stupid rules that you cannot handle a gun on a live stream. I don't know what they're going to do with that, so we're testing it. All right, so we have the bayonet, so 117. Wow, there's still a bunch of bayonets to go. And we have some magazines. Uh, I was kind of interested on this scope, so I mean, for a PSOP scope, Six by forty-two, eighty bucks right now. It's it's not horrible. Uh, I think we're going for about two fifty. But like I said, this one wasn't in great condition. Um, so let me actually just scroll down to show you what I'm really interested in. Um, this is a commercial Russian Makarov. It's in three eighty. Uh, pretty good shape. Uh, extra set of grips which were actually kind of nice 
this one I was interested in because it has a fretted barrel. Uh, fairly rare, so somebody actually went out and they got a fretted barrel and they changed it up. Uh, also, I believe a second pair of grips. Um, the thing of it is though, that's not half by 28 fretted. Uh, I, d uh, I don't know what that's fretted. So like I said, I really wanted it because I want to suppress it. That's the only reason I wanted that gun. So we'll see. So if it's like 250 or under, I will get it. Just so we have something to talk about. If it's more than that, hell no. Okay. Now somebody's bayonets are like. I do not know cutlery, guys. Um, a, f a client of mine, he was huge into knives, swords, bayos. So like for instance, okay, why is this one 200 and why is this one 375? No clue. There are certain things I know, and there are certain things I know that I don't know, and I'm not going to pretend to know. Three seventy-five. Wow, four seventy-five, five hundred. Scarce wild drop forging tool. Okay, so I guess it's a. Uh, Fairly rare maker. 650 bucks for a bayonet. That's just. Wow. Uh, at the last auction, so usually for most of my CNR guns, I do like to have a bayonet that's matching. Um, <coughs> I picked up a bayonet for my Swedish Mauser and it was like 50 bucks. I was like, felt horrible, but like those prices are just wow. Again, though, I guess like you know, like in the same light, you look at the alien pistol that's five thousand dollars, and if you're not in that world, meaning the competition world, in a competition world, I mean five thousand dollars is um, is what you would pay for an entry level custom gun. Um, so I have an SVI twenty eleven, and right now if you wanted to get one it's at least six thousand dollars plus a year wait in order to have one built and it's not unheard of basically to spend eight thousand dollars on a competition type gun um, so the alien pistol in that regard i mean it's just a brilliant gun it's not that much uh, but if you're just looking at it as a plinker yeah it's five thousand dollars that's ridiculous Ah, okay. Armin, thank you for the education on those. Yeah, at some point, I do know that I want to get a grand, but it I, it's like a scary world to enter because like there's just so much stuff. So that's why I was kind of hoping to get one from the CMP. At least you know you're not going to get ripped off. Should you get an RPR? So, Toy um are you? Let's. I guess we have some time. We can talk about your question. Uh, should you get an RPR? Yes. Um, now you said you had a budget of about two thousand. Is that including optics or no? Um, and the second question is, 
how far how far out are you going to shoot and are you looking for a precision gun or you're looking for something that you can go precision shooting and possibly go hunting with okay no to which part Okay, so 2K for just the rifles, uh, not including the scope, correct? Desert gun, okay. Uh, so I'm assuming you can shoot past 1,000 yards. Okay. And... Do you hand load? Uh, to make uh, do do you reload or are you gonna be buying okay um, so what I would say is yes okay no hand load so you're gonna be buying factory ammo if you can buy it a little book so I really like 300 PRC round um, so you have the Ruger precision rifle there's gonna be two sizes you have the standard and you have the magnums the magnums are going to be for 300 Win Mag, 338 Lapua, oh sorry, 338 Lapua, uh, and then the 300 PRC. If you're going to hand load, so there's two, so 300 Win Mag is going to have the most available ammo for it that you're going to buy it in the store, uh, but I like 300 PRC especially over 338 Lapois. Uh, 338 Lapois is gonna be about $5 around. Uh, 300 PRC you can buy, perfect example. Um, so thank you to my friends at Hornady. Um, so you have 300 PRC, so these are the only 300 PRC rounds available that you can commercially buy right now. Uh, you have, the 225 grain ELD match, that's Hornady, and then the Precision Hunter. Um, this stuff is actually supposed to be pretty dang accurate. Uh, it's about $2 a round, so it's about $45 a box. So it's significantly cheaper than 338 Lapua. And the reason why is because it's Hornady's round that they went and they made it SAMI. So uh, they're supporting it and the ammo is gonna be readily available. I believe we're gonna have others come into the fray. The cool part is the brass is pretty good and the brass is pretty decent and it's fairly easy to hand load these because it's just a 300, it's a 308 projectile um, and you have a bunch of projectiles that are gonna be available. Um, I've shot the 300 PRC rifle, Ruger Precision Rifle and 300 PRC out to about 2300 yards um, out past 2300 yards actually um, up to a mile it's like you're gonna be hitting more than 60 75 percent of the time uh, past 2000 it starts getting a little iffy because it goes back subsonic beyond that point uh, amazing gun um, so I did one video on it um, so I did the video on the 300 PRC Ruger Precision Rifle. Um, do take a look at it, and then we're going to do a bunch more with it in a couple of months, actually, as soon as it warms up a little bit. Uh, so the gun is going to be about, so it's going to be sub MOA with any of the, this ammo. Um, and you should be able to get sub half MOA 
with basic hand loads. Um, so it's going to be just fine. Um, it, the only things that are a little rough around the edges is the stock, but you can replace that if you want. Uh, that's going to be fairly easy to replace. Uh, but I would go 300 PRC uh, over 300 Win Mag because, well, 300 PRC is a better round than 300 Win Mag. Uh, the only issue, the only thing with 300 PRC is that there's less ammo available for it, but you can buy it, and as long as you stock up, you'll have plenty of it, and it's fairly easy to reload. Um, 300 Win Mag, there's a lot more ammo available for it, and both are a lot cheaper than 338 La Foi, uh, and better ballistics actually. Uh, 338 Lapua is going to have a little bit more energy in the first couple hundred yards, but beyond that, 300 PRC is far superior. Um, so to hand load it, it's going to be under a dollar a round uh, once you have the brass. So it's about 50% of the price. Uh, the biggest expense is actually going to be the bullets. Um, and then there you really have a lot more flexibility in terms of what you want to do. Um, and I am going to do a series on hand loading 300 PRC. Um, so a range out here will be able to push it past 2200, I believe. Um, a little bit past a mile, we'll be able to push it. Uh, so we're going to be able to do that. Uh, but I really like it. Uh, the guns. So the only other thing is, though, is that the gun is going to be heavier. Uh, so the gun with the scope is about 17 pounds. Uh, and I have the Leupold Mark V HD on it. So it's going to be heavier. Um, so it's not going to be for like lugging around with you. The good news is because the gun is heavier, the recoil, it just completely soaks it up. And the muzzle brake that's on there is phenomenal. Uh, and I'm not sure what state you live in. If you can put a suppressor on it, it's gonna be even better. Uh, but the round is kick-ass. Um, and I do have the new A-tip projectiles from Hornady. Uh, have even a higher ballistic coefficient on there that we should be able to stay supersonic uh, well till about 2,000 yards, which is just going to be awesome. As long as the bullet doesn't, once the bullet goes back subsonic, it just, the wind just starts throwing it all places and it's not that consistent. So kind of like the goal is we want to keep it uh, supersonic past a mile. Um, and like I said, with better projectiles, you can do that. With hand loading, you can absolutely do that. Uh, but factory gun, yep. Um, and I think, so Hornady, I think is going to have factory loaded eight tips. Um, but once again, though, I mean, like you're in a good position that you can actually go and you can actually shoot eight tips where it matters past a thousand yards. I mean, if, for most people who are plinking at 300 yards or less, it's just, it's wasting money. Uh, but the eight tips are about, so let's say, for example, eight tips, you're probably looking at a dollar around per bullet and powder. You're looking at about maybe 10 cents in powder. And assuming that you already have your brass, uh, brass you can reload it about ten times as long as you're not pushing it. Um, if you're not using a tip, so you're just using regular ELD match bullets, which are really nice actually to begin with, um, you're well under that in cost. And once again, it was like with this factory ammo, uh, we're out in Texas at the Ruger Media Day and we're shooting uh, well past a mile. So I would definitely get that. So at that point, you're looking at, you should be able to get the gun for about 1500 um, About 1500 And then, like I said, the only thing I'd probably change on that, if you don't like the stock, um, you can do like a Magpul PRS stock. Um, that's going to be a couple hundred. Uh, but like I said, the regular one is just fine. It's just like the adjustments are a little clunky. I talk about it in the video. Um, you can do, don't see it here, I can't reach it, um, an extended bolt knob, uh, catalyst arms, 
and then uh, an extended magazine release. You don't need the extended mag release, it's nice. Um, but the bolt knob, it, it's really, really nice to have an extended bolt knob. All right, we're almost there. We're getting there. Uh, but no, I would definitely go that route. Um, I think it's gonna be, so what's interesting is though, it's gonna, the Ruger Precision Rifle is gonna be the most accurate factory type gun. What you're giving up is not actually accuracy, you're giving up like the fit and finish on some of the parts. Uh, it's not gonna be as buttery smooth as a custom gun. <laughs> yeah, so kind of like even the same thing in New York, it's bolt action, you can pretty much do whatever you want on it. Well, thanks to the California guy. Not sure if you can see it. Nuke me. All right, we're getting down. So for the guys that are just joining, so Toymaker and Herman have been here from the beginning. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're others that are just joining so we're going for a gun auction there's some stuff that went a little more than what it wanted to spend but there's three other guns i'm interested in and they're coming up in a little bit so the thing with lightweight guns um if you need it for hunting yes go with a lightweight gun but if you don't need to move around with it, just get as heavy of a gun as you can get. Uh, the reason why it's gonna soak up a lot more of the recoil. Hmm, hundred bucks for 15 for 10 steel round 15 round mags ten dollars a magazine for m1 carbines that's not bad actually so i'm thinking a bunch of the people who are bidding on stuff already signed off so it is possible we may get some decent deals all right 80 bucks I'm still thinking about this uh, POS, POSP scope. So those are just magazine pouches. That's not even magazines. So did they still have those 30,000 M1 carbines or did most of those come back as blue sky? Blue skies. So at last auction, they had a bunch of, uh, well, not a bunch. They had like about like four blue sky uh, carbines pretty rough shape okay
70 bit 90 box board. Uh, anybody want to get me a uh, real Russian dragon off? I would love that. That is a lot for a spam cam. Ten dollars a box, basically. Yes, and I did see the video on those uh, Philippines ones. Toymaker, now how recently was that? <laughs> now it's amazing that can still happen in like this day and age where everyone's looked after. Okay, 20 years ago. Ooh, five boxes of blanks. Yeah, so here's actually an interesting one for you. So you have PMC M193, it's $130, plus the fees and everything, that's more than $5 a box that you can just get stuff for separately. We're coming up to the guns. Oh, 200 bucks for a Thompson drum? I did not even know they were that much now. 275, 300. Wowzer. No, I'm surprised that like no one just like makes new ones for that price. Okay, that's just ridiculous. 40 bucks for basically uh, three. How many max total is it? Four mags. $10 each. Yeah, that's not horrible. We have this Nagant revolver, and I do want to get one to Fred so we can suppress. But it's like 275 bucks. It's like I remember these were a hundred dollars. Big Al, which one was it? The uh, the PMC ones. 
So the biggest one actually that you usually will find at a lot of those auctions are going to be the Cabela's cans. People will just stock up. Somebody put 300 That's $360 after fees for a Nagant revolver. These used to be $100, people. And on one of the local forums, somebody sold one for under 200 in really good condition. <coughs> 350 wow. Three seventy five. Three seventy five. Wow. Granted, it was in pretty good condition, but dang. Okay, Webleys. I don't know anything about. Okay, so we're waiting for is these. So tomorrow's auction, there's going to be a bunch of uh, new modern stuff. And I'll include a link so you can actually take a look yourself. Six hundred bucks. I don't know much about them, but they looks all of these were actually in really good condition when I looked. In 1910, 550 bucks. 500 actually. Hmm. Somebody bid 550. Next bid 600. Uh, this is one space I don't really know much about. The early semi autos. That does look interesting, though. Look at this. A 10 round stripper clip is $180.
for this gun. <coughs> that is a little nuts. Welcome to the few people that just joined. But pretty much the auction's pretty much over. Okay, so they went back, they opened up the previous lot and it went up to 800. Okay, I don't know anything about these, but $300, $325 for a stripper clip. That is, wow, that's probably something that someone would just toss in a garbage can if you didn't know any better. That's amazing. Okay, so basically two out of the last three guns are these Makarovs. I'm interested in this one because it has a fretted barrel because I think suppressing it would be kind of cool but it's in 380 it's not nine millimeters although I think we would have issues with an if you have a nine millimeter we'd need a 40 can um, because nine Makarov is actually wider than nine Luger <coughs> Handles. Nine sixty. Thousand bucks for that. All right. So, what are these gonna go for? I don't even know right now. Seriously, three hundred fifty bucks, three seventy five for that. Wow. I am dumbfounded. I wonder if it's the fretted barrel. Four hundred bucks it sold for. Yeah. Hmm. Should have bid one seventy. Yeah. Nope, I got outbid. 200. Yeah. I already have two other Makarovs, but not in the 380. And that is in pretty good shape. Nope, I am not going to bid. Sold for 200. I'm shocked that that one's 200. The other one went for 400. Crazy. All right, and I think on that note, I'm just done. Uh. couple of p38s like I said this Mosin is actually not bad uh, this was in really nice shape hey what going what's going on ah it just went because it went to a new auction a new item um, this this Mosin, yeah this Mosin is in really nice shape um, when I looked at it. It was all matching post refurb. 1944. I might actually go for it and upgrade the one I just got. Yep, I'm gonna use the restroom. I'll be right back. I wanna go with 250 on this. But that's it. And I will leave this here so you guys can follow that. Be right back.
next time. Well, the stream's already over two hours, and I had my cup of coffee and this thing. But that's why I looked at uh, what guns were coming up. Wow, twelve hundred bucks for that high, that high power. Like I said, a lot of those, I mean, even though it's in seventy percent condition, I mean, a lot of those really shot up in price. One of them that I keep kicking myself over was um, what I really want for my collection is a high power, FN high power that had both uh that was captured by the nazis so it'll have the waffens on there and then that was sold to israel after world war ii uh and i'll have the star davids on them like i said that's i passed one off like 10 years ago for like 500 or 600 bucks i keep kicking myself over it like i said just one of those historical pieces You know, a lot of these also of wartime 1911s have really shot up in price. Well, not wartime, older 1911s. They could be wartime. So I gotta say, in general, I think these prices at this auction are like above what I expected. Uh, granted, I did market this auction a little bit. I helped the auction house market it for the forums. But these are pretty dang high prices. Like I don't think, like I said, the, I think the, I don't know a lot of the other guns, but the two SVT forties were pretty good deals, decent deals. Um. Yeah. I remember, but uh, maybe for tomorrow I'll have the little girl's potty here on the bottom under the table. So you won't be able to hear it. Although with this microphone, it, it would pick it up. All right, so the gun that I'm waiting for is this guy. Um, Yet another Mosin, but this one had nice laminate stock. Nope, it's not laminate. Um, it had a pretty stock and it was in really good condition. And again, I feel bad for missing the other gun, so I'm like, hey, I'd go for this. Although I'm not really sure I'm going to be able to get it for that price. This at last auction, I got one that's in pretty good shape. Um, for like one seventy. Seventeen hundred dollars for this nineteen eleven. Seventeen hundred. Wow. So historically, this does nothing for me, but as a 1911 guy, like that's a lot of money for a basic 1911. That really, if you're buying any of this stuff, I mean, you're buying it for the collectible aspect of it. Uh, so I did hear that they're closing down. Um, I did not know anything about this ahead of time. Um, I was just as shocked, but not really surprised. Um, I am gonna, so I suppose from the media circle, uh, I'm not really, I haven't had relationships with them, so I'm not in the know. From the finance side, um, they're not a publicly traded company, so I didn't have any clues or insights onto there, but I will find out, see what I can find out. 
Um, I suppose, though, I mean, they might be worried about the lawsuit. So one of the quickest ways of getting the Sandy Hook lawsuit thrown out is just saying, hey, look, we shut down DPMS and Bushmaster. Um, but the hedge funds who owned the Freedom Group while Remington Outdoors, um, we're trying to go more consumer friendly. And I think it's going to be an interesting question. I mean, I will cover it in a podcast or something later on. I'll take a look at the number of rifles they produced, but I'm fairly positive it's been going down and down. Plus, I mean, honestly, I mean, like, do people really recommend somebody go get a Bushmaster or a DPMS? I think if you're looking at those, you'll, if you're looking at DPMS, you'll just tell somebody, hey, why don't you go buy a Palmetto State Armory gun? Uh, and then if you're looking for a Bushmaster, you'll probably just recommend that they go, and okay, yeah, Wyndham Armory, but you'll go Ruger or Smith & Wesson uh, or a little bit higher end like Daniel Defense or whatnot. That looks interesting. This is interesting. General Motors Liberator single shot pistol. Whoa. That's a cool piece of history, but like I wouldn't pay 300 bucks for it just to blow it up. They look fairly cheap, 275. A CZ FNH CZ27. That's like really interesting. Again, don't know anything about them. T38. At some point, I will get one of these. 800. 800 bit 850. Sold. A flare gun. 80 bucks, looking for 90. Ninety looking for a hundred. Okay, well, like I said, this thing I'm really interested in. It's forty-five ACP. Wait, the Liberator single shot pistols weren't those the guns that be airdropped into France? That's what I think it is. Wow. Okay, it's a piece of history. 550 looking for $600 uh, that's what I'm fairly positive it is um, it's the guns they airdropped obviously not stainless steel
See, that should be something for forgotten weapons. Minion should get all over it. So I'm not at that level yet like where I'm collecting stuff like that. But it would be cool. I wonder how many of those Liberator pistols were produced. I mean, like, they should be fairly abundant, I would think. Five twenty five. Yeah, so I'm in that same position. Uh, even though, like I said, I have a lot of guns that I don't shoot, but I want to have the flexibility of doing it. But uh, the other thing is actually I like writing with nice pens, so I have a lot of nice fountain pens. There's a bunch of people who they'll buy Mont Blanc collectible fountain pens and then just like keep them in a sealed box. I can't do that. It just nods. It's like you have a pen, use it. You have a gun, shoot it. Okay. One forty for the Arisaka. Okay, so we have. Well, that, no, that didn't close. Okay, that closed fairly quick. All right, 160, looking for 170, sold. All right, so I put in 250 as the high bid. Not running that one now still. So my last bids is that Mosin. I can't go more it's I can't justify going more than 250 on that gun uh, so usually so what I have is all of these pens I either keep in my office or at home and um, yeah so let's see eh. okay I got outbid 350 Yikes, all right, well, someone should be happy with it. Um, I have, for my everyday type stuff, I have a German Lamy pen. And the other ones that I love for just like every day if I wanna lose it, these guys. So Jinhao, it's a Chinese uh, knockoff of a lot of the Mont Blancs. Um, so it's like four bucks, really nice. And they write really well. Uh, even though we're stainless steel nibs, there's still pretty good a good amount of flex in them. Uh, but if I lose it, then it is what it is. But the nice buns generally stay at home or only in my bag. Uh, or if I lend, let somebody use it. Well, most of the time when they open it up and we're like, oh, it's a fountain pen, like how do you use it? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you have to show them how to use it or like I'm staring at that pen to make sure I get it back. All right, and I think I'm done. Ammo-wise and everything. All right, so that's the auction. I guess we'll stick through till the end. But we bid on a, at least seven or eight guns. Did not take any home. Well, we could have, but it would be way too much money. But we're gonna try this again tomorrow. Um, so let, while we're doing this, let me pull up tomorrow's auction. Um, so tomorrow, yeah, same time. Um, so this is the more modern stuff. Uh, a couple of cold revolvers. Well, that's why you don't keep them in the shirt pocket. <laughs> uh, so tomorrow we have a couple of cold revolvers. Um, some Smith revolvers, and I did look at these. They're actually in pretty decent shape. 
nothing that really screamed like I need to absolutely have, but it will be interesting. Um, pretty decent Rugers. I forgot to take a look at a couple of these uh, Blackhawks. Uh, pretty nice shape P220. Uh, for very nice shape 239 uh, so these are actually still fairly low and generally the SIGs are going to go fairly cheap at these auctions um, this may 5906s um, the Sigmas which is the SW9VE um, couple others um, shotguns were in decent shape but I'm not really looking for a shotgun um, loophole scope I forgot to take a look at this one but it's a savage model 110 FP uh, so it looks like it's actually the police one uh, 190 for a 223 um, decent shape so I'm going to take the front sight off so they can use a scope. Um, it'll be interesting. Um, so you have a couple of sporterized guns there. There was... Oh, so actually I'll put this link in chat so you guys can see. Uh, the Browning A bolt I forgot to take a look at. So this Marlin was in really nice shape. Marlin model 60, even though I already have one, but like this one's like unfired. 110 bucks. Okay, so this was the really rare one. Now, so this is the Springfield Armory SA-1, which is one out of three semi-auto conversions of the M60. Um, case, all of original documentation. Um, this is a $15,000, $16,000 gun. Um, obviously, they have bid $5,500, but there is actually a reserve price. Um, that's gonna be right around 13, so it's gonna be interesting. The other one, so actually thirty eleven hundred dollars. Uh, we have a Gwyn Bushmaster. So this was actually the Bushmaster assault rifle. Uh, but the serial number on this one is R5. So I guess it's one of the very early prototypes. But it's still, like I've never handled one in person. I did go to the auction to take a look at these today. It just felt so cheap and junky. Uh, but from a collectible perspective, yes. Oh, so this is actually a pretty nice one. So this is a Ruger Mini 14 and 223. Um, and it had a loophole scope on it, which is in pretty nice shape. I mean, the loophole scope was in really nice shape, and the gun was in pretty good shape to begin with as well. So pretty good price all around for that. Um, And a bunch of percussion stuff. I pretty much stopped looking at that. A um, bunch of black powder stuff. Um, some reloading stuff. Antique hunting plates. And then further on, there was. Uh, Uh, some mounts. So taxidermy usually goes fairly cheap. Yeah. And a couple of safes, but I think the safes were already a little too much. It was just nuts. So there you go, guys. Uh, let me just go back to the auction, see if it finished out. Um,
Yep, so last couple lots. See if I got that Nagant Revolver, I might have possibly bid on that Nagant Ammo. Hmm. Sold, and last lot. Colt 1911, seven round magazines. Okay, well, it's finished, more or less. We'd hope so. All right, two and a half hours. Guys, thank you for joining. It was kind of fun. Hopefully, it was a bit educational for you guys. Um, Herman, thank you for joining. Big Al, Toymaker. So, Toymaker and Herman, you guys were here almost pretty much from the beginning. Uh, thank you for hanging out for two and a half hours. So, hopefully, that was a little fun for you. Uh, we did discuss some um, precision rifles. We talked about auctions. Uh, we'll do this again tomorrow, although probably bidding on less guns. A little disappointed that we did not get anything, but on the same side, at the same time, I'm really happy that didn't really spend money. Um, so it was fun. Um, so as always, thank you guys for joining. Thank you for participating. Thank you for the questions. Um, we talked about uh, the SHOT Show videos. There's going to be a bunch more coming. Typically, I'm planning one a day. And then um, probably in the beginning of March, we already have the brand new content. Um, there's a couple of other videos that I finished uh, that just haven't posted yet. So a couple on Notorious G2Cs, uh, both in 9 and 40. And then uh, we'll have some Glock 43, 43X, 45, a uh, couple of Walfers, a uh, couple of Zebs. Uh, so we have that stuff coming and then obviously we're going to get into as soon as it warms up a little bit we're going to have a whole bunch of precision rifle stuff and hopefully it'll have the new guns by that time as well uh, focusing on 6.5 PRC 300 PRC so it'll be lots of fun stuff um, anything in particular you want to see let me know in the comments below um, and I'll try to request it to make sure that we have that and that's that so thank you guys for joining uh, 10 o'clock and since considering I've been up since very very early I'm passing out so thank you thank you thank you and I'll see you guys next time